What are three of the biggest challenges that Catholic families are facing today in living out their Catholic faith? That's what we're going to talk about as part of our Easter series, Rebuild My Church. And I'm really excited to be here with Tammy today because we want to dig in deeper into this topic so that we can see how the church can come around these challenges and some of the solutions that we're presenting to bring renewal from the church from within. So I am Lisa Martinez. I am the founder of Little With Great Love. We are a restoration ministry of storytellers that use media to bring hope and healing and restoration in Christ. And my teammate, Tammy, is here today. She has been a longtime friend of mine. If you've journeyed with us previously, you know that Mama Five, she's a Catholic speaker, and she's also a ministry leader. Thank you so much for being here to chat with me about this today, Tam. Absolutely. You know, I, I love any opportunity that we have to kind of share our hearts and talk about real topics. You know, what are some real things that people are facing? Um, but I wanted to say one little caveat as we start out yeah. here. You know, I think it's a, it's important that um, that we kind of address the fact that this isn't coming from a critical perspective um, within the yeah. church. There's two people who who love the church, who have been you know, faithful members of the Catholic Church for most of our lives. I think that, you know, as laity, it's one thing for us to say, this is what the church is missing, miss, missing, and how do I come alongside the church and what I can offer and what I can do to help build the church? And then just kind of sitting from a perspective of, you know, critique. And I think that, you mm -hmm. know, there's this movement, right? So we're not looking to have any sort of, you know, condemnation, but it's this kind of conviction with the Holy Spirit where we go, okay, you know, where do we need to kind of be able to give? And then how do we as laity and then, you know, hopefully, you know, other members of the church, how do we come into this and kind of solve some of these problems? And I think that's the beauty of what you're offering here is many different voices who have different experiences in their ministries, in their parishes, in their churches, because, you know, there's different parishes and different ministries um, seek to solve different problems. And I think as long as Absolutely. we're willing to kind of address something and then kind of try to problem solve to find a solution, I think that's that's a good step in the right direction. As you <laughs> said, my name is Tammy McCarthy. I um, am a Catholic blogger. Um, I blog at um, Whispers of Love and Faith. That's on Facebook and Instagram. And, you know, I would say like the main part of my ministry is, you know, trying to meet people where they are and drawing souls into, into the banquet table of the Lord. You do a, a beautiful job of that in a variety of ways. And, you know, part of the conversation, I thought that, um, you know, you were excited about joining in on this combo, you know, and, and experience in speaking from your experience, you know, as a mom, as you've homeschooled, yeah. And then you've also have a background in education. You're also a speaker. And then you've, you know, been online in these platforms, blogging, social media for years as well. So I know it's just beautiful to think of how the Lord is allowing all those different gifts in you to be activated in different ways, right, over the years. And I think what you said, it's important for us to realize that, you know, when we're sharing about some of the movements that are happening in the church and some of the challenges that we're facing, it's that opportunity to throw a light on it of some of the goodness that we see also that can come from those challenges. And as well as the fact that sometimes maybe some of the challenges that we're facing, we just didn't know how to resolve those, you know. And so this can kind of give light, shed light onto those and something that may be working. Um, you know, you're out in the, the Philadelphia area, you know, and I'm down in Austin. And there's just different programs that we use sometimes and just different things. Um, so it's great to have these conversations across, you know, states and across different parishes and dioceses to see, you know, what's working, what are some of the challenges or what are some of the things we might be able to do better? Because we can always do better, right? It's not something that's just, you know, relative to the church. It's in life, you know, and stuff. It's like, I had a boss once and she was like, when I can't do better, that's when I'm gonna shut the doors because, you know, mm. I guess then 
I won't have anything else left to learn. It'll be done, you know, so. Yeah, I mean, and I think it's a combination of, um, like you said, having a couple of different roles and, and being willing to listen to what people are saying. You know, when you're trying to run programming and you feel like you don't have a response, it's like going back to people, you know, what are you looking for? What do you need? Um, you know, what's, what's frustrating for you? Where do you see a lack? And I think that, you know, the first step is, do, is doing that, is being able to kind of listen and see where the need is and then ask yourself, you know, do I have the resources to meet that need personally? And do I have greater resources in my sphere of influence that I can kind of look at and say, you know, my parish could use this. And I think I know a bunch of women that could contribute to this. Or I think I know some parents that would be happy to help out. I, I bring into this fear, like my own experience as a parent, um, having children that made sacraments in the church. So I come from that perspective. I come from the perspective of a wife. You know, I've been um, married in the church for um, 23 years this summer. So I have my own, you know, challenges that marriage has presented. And so there's some ways I think that I've had to really white knuckle it you know, in some, in some ways, um, especially having a husband who now, um, is, you know, is, is mentally disabled and, you know, that's presented his own, its own challenges and medical issues that we've encountered through our marriage. And, you know, lastly, as, um, as just a woman in this day and age, you know, what I personally need, um, in my own walk and being able to say, to kind of broaden that and say, you know, what can I, what can I offer in this space that um, that I need myself? And to that, I'll kind of share like, you know, one of the, my first challenge, I would say, um, so I've homeschooled my kids. I've homeschooled them for several years now. And um, we choose to do a curriculum, a classical curriculum that runs the faith through all aspects of their schooling. Um, and so when we would come time for them to receive their sacraments in the church, um, you know, it was always that our programs that we were doing were, were very needy. Like my children had a, just a lot of understanding of whatever sacrament it was that they were going to make. And so what I was noticing is I would get together and I would attend these meetings with other parents and it just didn't seem that they were prepared that that the parents had an understanding of what was happening. And I began okay. to see this, this similarity of parents who had their kids making their first communion because that was a cultural thing. You know, this is what yeah. grandma wanted. You know, the baptism happened because mom wanted it. And the first communion happened because that's what you do around seven or eight. You make your first communion. It's a beautiful white dress. And Everyone needs the first communion pictures. It's like the, the rite of passage as a Catholic family. And I began to see that there was a lot of families who were doing that in a cultural sense. And I yes. think that when you have an understanding of the Eucharist, right? Body, blood, soul, and divinity. And you're sitting there and you, you understand what your child's undertaking but you don't know if the other parents understand what their child is undertaking because yeah. of a lack of adult catechesis, right? Mm -hmm. So that kind of began to be an issue for me where I started to really think about like, how do I reach some of these parents who I think don't really have an understanding of what their child yes is experiencing, right? So um, so I connected with um, a woman, since I do some speaking, I connected with a woman and they offer these faith and family evenings. It's like once a month, instead of doing your CCD every week. So you make a commitment that once a month, the parents have a speaker for an hour while the children go away to CCD. Such a brilliant, way for this parish to catechize the parents and to get these parents understanding what's happening at the same time that 
their children are undergoing an understanding of the sacrament that they're going to partake in. And so I gave this presentation on the Eucharist. And I had said to the, the, the mom, the lady that had hired me, I said, now listen, I'm not gonna pull any punches here. Like body, blood, soul, and divinity. Are you, you're in here with me, right? And she said, yeah, I want you to hit it hard. I'm like, okay. And you know, it's a, it's a different talk when you're, when you kind of, when people sign up for a retreat, right? And they're like all in for it. It's different when what you're talking about can be perceived as um, erroneous because, <laughs> hey, I didn't sign up for this talk. I was, I signed up for this time that you're supposed to talk yeah. with me. So I really was unsure of what the Lord would have. Yeah. But what happened is I looked into a sea of parents. There was probably maybe like 70 or 80 parents. And I looked into the sea of parents and instead of seeing faces that were, um, that were judgmental or faces that were, um, that were, that were um, arrogant or faces that were angry, what I saw was faces that were inquisitive. I saw like faces that were, I, I saw parents taking notes and I'm like, it was so <laughs> eye opening for me that it was like, they want this. Like these yeah. parents want this, they want to understand. And, you know, it was beautiful to kind of come around them and share the truth of the Eucharist and, you know, share it from a perspective of the Eucharistic miracles and talk with them in a very truth filled, it doesn't matter if you don't believe this, this is the truth. This is not a watered yeah. down version. This is the truth. And um, just to see the fruits that came out of that, you know, just so many parents that came up and were like, I've never had another parent explain this to me in such a way that I can't wait to talk about it with my children. I felt like parent after parent, you know, was coming forth and they were just saying, you know, sometimes when people are talking at you or they're sharing stuff and they're not sharing enough of their own personal experiences or the way that something affects them or the way that something has penetrated them, a deep truth has penetrated them, it's very easy for you to like dismiss it. And so yeah. these, it was just beautiful. I mean, it was beautiful and yeah. it just showed me that this is what we're missing. We're missing, you know, um, and I, I, I'll share with you an example that I had said to one of the dads and he kind of like looked at me and it was like, he showed up and, you know, we're in Eagles territory here, right? So, <laughs> you know, the dads are coming in. This was, um, I'm trying to think of the time of year that I'd done my first talk. Maybe this was like in October and, you know, the dads are all, you know, have their like hats on and their sweatshirts. And as I was talking, I said, you know, when you meet a, th a three-year-old Eagles fan, that's not a three-year-old <laughs> Eagles fan. That's a three-year-old whose dad has passed down a love of the sport. You know, that dad is, yeah. passed, or mom has passed down a love of the game. And that child will learn to spell Eagles before most words. And it is just their <laughs> love for the Eagles has just been at every turn. And yeah. I was sharing with these parents, I said, you pass down something that means a lot to you. And I said, yes. we're supposed to pass down our faith to our children, but we can't pass down something we don't possess. If you don't True. view your faith as important as the next Eagles game, and I'm not trying to pin football against, you know, I'm, I'm speaking in a very way that's just something, something that we embrace in a way that we pour so much of ourselves into, right? So whatever that is in, mm -hmm. in your life. Um, but for these dads wearing these Eagle sweatshirts, it was, it was making sense to them. Like, yeah, my yeah. three year old is an Eagles fan. He might adopt it later on at 10 or 11, but he's an Eagles fan because dad is, and he's going to watch <laughs> the games because dad does. And uh, he wants to be yeah. like dad. Yeah. So when mom and dad don't go to church on Sunday or mom or dad don't pray or mom or dad don't open their Bibles or, you know, and they're, these kids are looking at this. It's like, 
is it really going to matter when my parents tell me things like, I have to go to mass now because I'm making my first communion? I mean, yes, we learn through modeling, right? Your child learn right, will learn right away what's important to you by what you pass down. And I think that there was a lot of parents there that felt kind of shorted in that. Yeah. Not shorted in the fact that they felt convicted about not passing it down, but I think shorted in the fact that they were like, I, I need more information, Mm -hmm. you know, like I, I need to understand what you understand because you seem to be able to pass down something that I haven't wrapped like my, my hands around yet. Yeah. So I think, you know, that's the two, two challenges right there. Right. Which is first, you know, like a lack of understanding. Right. So we to see a lack of understanding would be that we haven't been prop. The parents haven't been properly catechized. Right. You know, to be able to pass that on. And then, um, then the solutions around that, you know, if I haven't, then if I have a lack of understanding, then how do I live out that? How do I pass that out, you know, to my children the same way, you know, that they would embrace a sports team, you know, here it's the Cowboys. I'm sorry, you know, and stuff like that. Sorry, not sorry, you know, and stuff. but you know, that's, those are those fundamental things. Right. And if we're doing something because we should, right. You know, and stuff. And if we're more passionate about our sports teams than we are about our eternal reward, there's yeah. there's some there's some issues there with our priorities, you know, and stuff. And I think it's very easy, uh, you know, for us to cast our gaze off to something that's very uh, passing, you know, and stuff because it's in front of us, you know. I mean, we don't can we see heaven, you know what I mean? Even though we start to live our heaven and our earth here, you know, and stuff. And it's easy to see these things that, you know, these things are becoming important in the priority and parents are having to, you know, I mean, it, it's the toughest job, right? I mean, there's huge responsibilities. There's, there's, you know, taxes on your time and everything like that. You have, you know, I mean, you have five children, you know, so there's, there's a lot that you have to do and it can be easy to kind of shift off, right, into something that seems like it's more of a priority and then then just kind of checking the boxes in these other areas oh at this age we do this at this age we do that you know it's part of our culture it's part of how we were raised and stuff and i think it's it's very humbling to have to admit that i don't understand something you know to then not be able to pass that along so i love these movements that you're doing and that's a really creative way to do that right at your parish to then provide you know talks and you know, this way of, you know, instead of having to go four weeks, you know, you can come to one that seems like a, oh, that seems like a draw, right? And then we can then use that as an opportunity. Let's split off. I'm going to be talking with you. They're going to be over there. And there, there's that opportunity to be fed where somebody might not even realize that I'm starving, you know, and stuff because, you know, that's just how they were raised. And it's not to say to knock a parent or something like that to be like, you know, whatever, But at the same time, you're creating this space and an invitation and an opportunity then to feed and nurture someone, to give them what they may not have realized they needed. And then for them to then be able to pour that out into their child and the other children into other people in the community, you know, and stuff. They start to see, wow, they're really embracing this. They're really understanding that they're starting to live that out. Uh, I really think it's 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 very. Yeah, it's it's pretty genius actually. (laughs) Well, and I think the other, you know, part of that, because I've done a couple of these, the other part of that is, I think sometimes when we, when we always have, you know, well-known speakers that we know do this regularly, or, you know, the priest or the deacon in the area, like sometimes we just want to have somebody who is in the same boat. Do you yes. know what I mean? Like sometimes you want to, you know, and I was telling some of these, some of these stories because I'm, you know, me, Lisa, I'm like very sarcastic yes. and I love to share my relationship with my husband. And I love to share um, how I feel like in a lot of ways in our marriage, we've tried to be boxed in by people. You know, this is what I think a homeschooling family looks like. This is what I think a Catholic homeschooling family looks like, you know, and 
to be able to stand in front of people and to share my family and to share my sarcasm or share my love for what I, for what I do as a mom and have people relate to me and say, that looks like one of the moms in my school line, you know, or she talks like one of my friends that I have wine with or that I go to the movies with and to make that connection with me and say, hold on a second. I can validate what she's saying because it sounds a lot like my life. Yes. And then to kind of come in with a truth that we can't easily dismiss, right? Because we're going, oh, I don't, maybe I should rethink this because I've never heard this truth explained this way, you know, or yeah. man, the way that she says that with such conviction, no one's ever said that way. It's everyone's kind of offered it to me as like an option, you know, and yeah. she's telling me it's not an option. She's telling me it's like the source and summit of everything I'm supposed to believe. And yeah. I've never heard this before, you know? So I think, yeah. you know, just some of that, I think, um, to your point, it's sort of like when somebody puts something in front of you and you're like, I didn't even know I was hungry, but I'm like famished, <laughs> yeah. you know? And I, what I found was, you know, I tried to leave after my talk, I tried to leave this like, you know, 40 minutes of time for questions. And I was like, 40 minutes, I'll probably be like, after 20, I'll be sitting back with like a drink of cold water. Well, no, I mean, these parents were just like, what about this? What about this? And mm -hmm. I just, in my mind, I was like, this is a whole different talk. Like, yeah, this is a whole nother talk. Like now that you're yeah. asking me this and what I saw was I saw these parents that saw this kind of wealth of knowledge and they were like, yeah. how do I keep tapping into what she can offer me? Yeah. And not because I'm this like, you know, super like heady intellectual, yeah. but because I'm walking a similar path. I have yes. teenagers. I've done the young a young kid before. I understand where these parents are. I understand the sacraments. Um, but, you know, to, to talk about, you know, I know that was kind of like, kind of rolled like two of the challenge in one, in one there. Yeah. But the, to kind of talk about this other area is, you know, when I used to homeschool my kids, sometimes I would come to the end of the school year, right? And I would be like, mm, you know what? I really want to teach them this. One year it was, I wanted to teach them some of the countries. And so mm -hmm. what I did was I reached out to our local co-op and I said, you know what, I'm going to offer this class and it's going to be, we're going to do a different country, every co-op, and I'm going to bring some kind of fun food in. And we're going to, you know, talk about a couple of the animals. We'll do a couple of like fun things about that country. But <laughs> the idea is to expose them to where, what continent it's in for them to have a familiarity with like a little bit about uh, the culture. And then if I can teach them a word or two from that country. Yeah. So it's just kind of like this, kind of like a multicultural experience, right? Um, but it was because I saw a need within my own children. And I thought, if I'm gonna teach it to my kids, I might as well open it up and see who else yeah. wants to learn this. And so I kind of had the same approach in my own spiritual life in that, um, my, I grew up with a lot of cousins who were Protestant and a couple of my cousins are actually Protestant preachers. And, um, I used to love the way that they just knew their scripture. I mean, yeah. they would just know it and they would just quote, you know, they would, you know, John three sixteen says, blah, 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 mm -hmm. blah, you know, and I would be like, mm -hmm. <laughs> and my mom used to get really defensive, you know, she'd be like, well, Catholics read the Bible too. You know, we, you can open up any of the readings of the day and, you know, we have all the mm -hmm. scripture in there. And I'd be like, yeah, but I don't, I don't know it. Mm -hmm. Like, I don't know it. Not like I know it now. Yeah. But I think sometimes we have to be convicted by the Holy Spirit. Right. And we kind of have to look at stuff in our life and say, where is the spirit kind of saying to me? Mm -hmm. And so I had kind of come and I was like, Lord, I don't really know my scripture well. Yeah. And I don't want to know it well. Like, I'm just going to memorize a bunch of scripture. I'm like, I want to know it so that when someone's struggling and they come up to me and they say, you know, Tam, I'm like really struggling in this area. And I feel like the Lord's doing something here. I'd be like, okay, well, you know, have you heard of Isaiah 43, 19? Like the Lord says, like, I'm doing something new. And I could yeah. 
not in an arrogant way, but in a way that kind of like to declare truth over somebody, right? Like this is what the yes. Lord says that he has for us. Um, and so I got to that point and from that came the readings of the day that I do yeah. on whispers of love and faith. So I desire two things. I desired a connection um, with my community. I didn't want to just be kind of, you know, preaching a reflection or, or preaching scripture at them. But I did feel like, wow, there were so many times when I was nursing a baby or I was, you know, got caught up by a toddler falling asleep <laughs> on me. And I was like, what else could I do that doesn't involve really moving, you know, from yeah. this spot? <laughs> and I just started thinking, it'd be really neat if I could read a meditation or be part yeah. of a reflection. So I just started thinking, you know what? I will all do this. I'll get on, I'll do the readings of the day, I'll provide a reflection. And then just because I do it live, I open it up to anyone who's on with me to start praying together and to share intentions. And I, it's interesting because, because I've done those other talks with the parents, I actually now have some of those parents that join me live. <laughs> yeah. So it's just the beautiful fruits of like what the Lord is doing. These, yeah. you know, women that were like, wait a second, I, I want to be a part of now that she's talking scripture. I want to be a part of that. I don't know my scripture yeah. either. So yeah. I just, I just think that, you know, the Lord can kind of place a need on our heart and he can ask us, how can we answer that? Yes, so true. And I think that's one of the things that um, I admire about you is just that, that giftings that God's given you and then you walking deeper into those. And that's what I've seen, you know, as we've been journeying, you know, especially reconnecting after a number of years after we were out of school and then started doing the ministries together and watching you, you know, using those giftings in different ways, it's continuing to evolve and the Lord, you know, bringing you into those spaces where you could just speak, you know, I've been on the, um, when I get a chance to, I do the readings and she's an hour ahead and, you know, on the <laughs> Easter. <laughs> um, so when I can, I get on in the mornings or, you know, can watch a replay on Instagram and that's at Whispers of Love and Faith, right? Mm -hmm. So she has her blog at Whispers. It's whispersofloveandfaith.com. Uh -huh. so, yeah. Uh -huh. And then Whispers of Love and Faith on Instagram and on, on Facebook. And um, I know you do it on Instagram and then share it on Facebook so you can catch that if you're not able to do it. It's typically 8 o'clock. Uh, is it? Yeah, Eastern yeah. Standard mm -hmm. Time. And it's beautiful to see, you know, Tammy just allowing the Lord to use her giftings um, it's not something that she's scripting or, you know, it's not like a homily. It's just like digging into the readings, speaking from how the spirit's moving. And then, like she said, that time of prayer and that time of prayer has just been really fruitful. I mean, there's times where the Lord's just placing things in her heart, whether she knows the person or not, you know, giving, speaking into people's lives, into their situations. And they're like, how could you have known that? And it's just like kind of mind blowing. And it's just God just using what you have where you're at, you know, and I think that that's really the call moving forward for all of this, right? And the challenges in that you're experiencing, whether it's something that you're experiencing personally, whether, you know, maybe you're a parent that doesn't really know the faith very much and your kid is going to be coming up to some of these, you know, landmarks, you know, in the faith there. There's an opportunity if your parish isn't maybe doing something like this there's an idea, you know, maybe approach your pastor, maybe it's something that programming, I know Tammy would love to hear from you and stuff. She could share a little bit more, you know, and, and there's, uh, you know, there's those opportunities. Um, not everybody has time to, you know, dive into Thomas Aquinas and like figure it all out, <laughs> you know, um, maybe it just, maybe you're not alone. Maybe you're not the only one that's going through that and experiencing that. So there's other parents that are also in the pews that are kind of like, uh, yeah, you know, but nobody really kind of wants to step forward and say that, you know, so just beautiful to see how, you know, we are all members of the body. We all have our own giftings. And if, if, if that's, you know, Tammy stepping forward to say, okay, these are things I've learned from my time at Superville, my time in studying, my time of growing in my faith, and this is something I can share. And then, you know, step alongside, you know, the clergy and stuff to have the laity in the parish being able to 
take some of that so they don't have to give every talk and every homily and they don't have to prepare all those things because Lord knows they have so much administration and things that they are called to as well. So I think this is just an example of just, you know, something that can really work well. And I'm so glad that you're able to kind of unpack that with us today and that people could, you know, see some examples of utilizing um, this opportunity for catechesis alongside, you know, children and their parents and really draw people into community and then see how that pours out, right? And how it's like pouring into your own, you know, ministry and going forward and then what God can continue to do from that. For parents too, you know, one of the things that I would say is, you know, don't be afraid of your DRE, your director of religious yeah. education, you know, don't like they're trying to do what they think is best for the families and for the children. And yes. I think it's, you know, don't be afraid to come alongside and say, hey, listen, I don't really feel like I know a fullness of this. You know, yeah. is there a way that I know the kids are having, you know, their first communion retreat? Could we have a parents track at the same time? You know, could you yeah. bring people in to talk to us about like the Eucharist? Could you have people talk to us about living our faith right now? I mean, what a gift that would be to a DRE if she realized that what she was experiencing wasn't, you know, parents coming at her about like the timing or why do I have to do this? Mm -hmm. but it was from a genuine place of, of care and a desire to know. I know that's one thing that this, you know, DRE is experiencing locally who had started this faith and family meetings were just a, an honest, a bunch of parents had come forward and just were like, we don't, we don't know what we don't know. And I yeah. think that there's a real vulnerability in that and a real beauty in that. Um, and there's also a, a real beauty in being able to say, and here's how I'm willing to help out. You know, here's how I'm yeah. willing to promote this in the school system. Here's how I'm willing to come alongside. And I, you know, I'm a great baker. I'll, I'll bake refreshments for it, you yeah. know, or yeah. I'll get some of my mom or my dad friends to set up everything in the, you know, however we can come alongside and support um, yeah, I think, you know, my mom used to always say to us kids like, oh, um, what's that saying? It's like, um, many hands make the work light or something like yeah. that. You know, the idea of like, you know, what might take me setting up 10 hours will take me an hour and a half if I have a few friends helping, you know, yes. how do we have that same mindset going into our parishes and going into ministries that we are able to you know, if we're going to offer an area where we feel a need, can we offer a solution? And can that solution yes. somehow involve us? You yes. know, I think that's where that's where we need to start the talks as laity. Where, to your point, Lisa, there's so much more of us, and as we see, um, as we see, you know, a decline in the number of priests that are in our parishes and we we know that the greatest gift that these priests can give us is the Eucharist and the sacraments. How do we come alongside them in some of these other programs? I think is just a great way for us to um, kind of recommit to establishing roots in our parish and getting more people involved. Yeah, this is how we rebuild the church, amen. All right, Tam, thanks for being here today. Thank you. You guys can continue this series with us. Um, we have a number of ministries that we're covering, as well as some of our teammates sharing um, ways they feel um, called to rebuild the church. So um, let's continue. We are Easter people and go forth, um, you know, in the light of the spirit to continue the good work that God has already begun. So thank and God bless you. Have a great day.